good evening everyone uh, in our yesterday's lecture we discussed about the human genome project and today i promised that we will discuss dna fingerprinting this is the concluding part of the uh, chapter number 6 as we already completed our discussion on human genome project today we will start our class by looking into the video of human genome project so let's all of us have a look into the video and uh, after clarification of all doubts then we will move ahead towards the next process that is called dna fingerprint i guess the screen is visible by everyone yes ma'am what is dna fingerprinting or dna profiling Leicester University geneticist Alec Jeffries developed a technique Lately. called DNA fingerprinting in 1985. It allows DNA samples from different people. We need to first look into the video of human genome project. Then we will go ahead for DNA fingerprinting. An organism's genome is the entire genetic material of that organism, so the complete set of DNA. It provides all of the information required by the organism to function. DNA is a long chemical that contains bases represented by the letters A, T, G and C. A gene is a section of DNA that codes for a particular protein. To learn more about DNA, watch this video. The human genome is 3 billion bases long, but only consists of about 20 to 25,000 genes. As an average size gene is only about 3,000 bases long. This means that large parts of our DNA doesn't code for genes. The genome of every person on earth is 99.9% the same. It's that tiny 0.1% that makes up genes that give us our unique differences. In fact, Our genes are 98% similar to a chimpanzee's and 75% the same as a mouse. The Human Genome Project was an enormous project that saw scientists around the world collaborate to work out the sequences of bases in the human genome. The project started in 1990 and was completed by 2003, two years ahead of schedule. And here is the order of the bases: A, T, G, C, T. Only joking. If I was to read out the bases one at a time for 24 hours straight it would take a whole century and I certainly don't have time for that. So, now we have the information, how is it being used? Well, since the structure of DNA was determined in 1953, we have known that the order of the bases is very important and that a change or mutation in this order can result in diseases. By sequencing the whole genome, scientists can use this information to work out the genetic causes of diseases such as cancer as well as developing treatments the forms of genes or alleles associated with different inherited disorders have been mapped which means that genetic tests can be carried out on people to see if they are sufferers or carriers of an inherited disorder for example a genetic test can tell if someone is a carrier of cystic fibrosis by comparing the dna of people living in different parts of the world Scientists have been able to trace human migrations. The out of Africa theory that the first humans left Africa within the last 100,000 years has been supported by comparing the DNA of people living in different areas of the globe. The evidence shows which people are more closely related to others. Because of all the data generated by the Human Genome Project is available to anyone to view free of charge online means that scientists around the world can use the information in their research. This helps to increase the number of uses for it. There have been major advancements in DNA sequencing since the Human Genome Project ended. 
It took 13 years and billions of dollars to sequence a whole genome during the project, but now scientists can do it in a matter of hours, and you can even get yourself sequenced for a small fee. These advancements will help develop new strategies for the prevention and treatment of disease. So, in this video, you have learnt what a human genome is, what the Human Genome Project was, and how the information from it is If you like the video, used. give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe. Comment below. So that is if all you about questions. Questions. Why not check out our Fusco app as well? Until is this part clear? Yesterday we clearly described the uh, attributes of Human Genome Project, but I thought visualizing it will be easy for you. Anyone any doubts? Class? No, no ma'am. So we will uh, now next move, time. move ahead for the next part. You must be uh, thinking that what is the process by which human genome was sequenced and what may be the method of going this process. See, when I'm talking about the process of uh, human genome project, it seems what is so special in that? Anyone can do it. But the challenge was the complexity of the data as well as the second channel challenge that was that was the huge amount of data handling. Okay. And as you know that the genetic material is, it is microscopic. So obviously we cannot look into it by naked eyes and we cannot simply uh, say that, okay, this is the A, this is the T. So you must be wondering by which method actually the DNA is sequenced. So in uh, next sharing, I wish to share the process of sequencing DNA, how DNA sequencing was done by these scientists. Give me one minute to share the screen, I will share. So let's move to the world of DNA sequencing. Uh, before we proceed, I just wish to say there are uh, where, like two methods of sequencing. One is known as Maxim Gilbert method. And this method is a bit complicated and time consuming. So the best method was developed by Sanger and uh, this method is widely adopted till date for sequencing of DNA. Apart from that, I must say that handling of this data was done by in correlation with the uh, computers. So let's have a look into the Sanger method of DNA sequencing. Uh, is the screen visible, Rita? Class, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Great. So, without much ado, let me uh, start playing the video.
so it was the brief idea i uh, wish to share you the process so that you understand it better actually to sequence dna what we do is we take extract dna first step is extraction of dna so it's not at all a simple process beta you can understand in case of especially eukaryote where the dna is located beta in case of eukaryotes what is the location of dna in case of eukaryotes i guess everyone can hear me please let me know if there is any uh, problem in hearing me ma'am can you repeat the question i asked that where does the dna locate in case of eukaryotic cell nuclear membrane inside nuclear membrane so obviously first step of dna sequencing is you need to take a cell inside which the dna is locating you need to uh, actually break down the nuclear membrane cell wall and then take out the genetic material in your grade 12s practical syllabus you have the process for extraction dna sometime in our other lectures i will tell you about what is the exact process now once i receive this dna in the sanger method of dna sequencing what we do is we take pieces of dna into different test tubes for example test tube 1 2 3 okay now in each test tube the person who wish to sequence dna is going to add first of all the template then d n t p s that means that means di uh, like uh, uh, deoxy adenosyl triphosphate deoxy guanosine triphosphate deoxy um thiamine triphosphate and cytosine triphosphate apart from that we need to add primer we know that dna polymerase is a enzyme which cannot add the first base so primer to be added and which enzyme will go for production of dna strand that is dna polymerase then how all these four test tubes be different the difference will be in first test tube we will add modified dnas okay so this modified dnas in this case it will be g in this case it will be c in this case u it will be t so what will happen considering first case there is a dna strand with a sequence t a uh, let's let's take t c g c a t c c g now what will happen here there will be addition of primer and as soon as the replication process will start the nitrogenous bases will be added 
complementary to the template. So this is my template strand. Complementary basis will be added like this. The moment there will be presence of A, in this case, the A we added is a special one, which cannot bind with the two nucleotides. So what will happen? It can bind with A, this in this case and bind with the previous T, but it cannot bind with the next one. So the process of production of chain will stop here. And I will get a fragment of this much length. Okay. So in this test tube, I am going to get different fragments of different length. And in each case, the Length of fragment will be stopping at A. So consider I have many small pieces of DNA in this. In this case, process will be same. Only the replication will stop at G. In this case, it will stop at C. In this case, it will stop at T. Now we are going to for, go for gel electrophoresis. I told you while describing structure of DNA that gel electrophoresis, in gel electrophoresis, DNA will move towards a positive electrode. Why? Because presence of phosphate makes it negatively charged. So you have small, small wells. Well means depression in the gel where you are going to put this content of test tube 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now, these small DNA fragments, when you apply electricity, will start moving, all of them will start moving towards a positive electrode. But we know the lighter will move ahead. So, depending on their sizes, they will be forming the different, different bands. It will be similar for G. It will be similar for C. Similar for Now, basically, these bands are read from this direction and the sequence of the DNA strand is decided. I know from your part, it is difficult to understand how to read the bands of DNA uh, sequencing. But depending on sequence, for example, in this case, you can see, uh, let us uh, try Okay, generally it is done nowadays by an automated DNA sequencer. There is a computer system which is aligned with this uh, and it scan and it will tell you uh, the sequence of DNA. But if we try, we can also do, uh, you can, you have to simply place a scale. Okay. So you need to see which band is coming before and after. So I can see this band is coming uh, before. So I will first write A, G, C and T. So if this is band number one, this is band number two, then the sequence will be uh, C. Sorry, let me start from this one. C, T, then again it will be C. Then there will be A. Understood? Can you tell me what will be the next phase? Anyone? Which one will be the fifth one? A. Very good. A is, do you think which band is just before this uh, fourth band? 
ये फोर्थ बैंड से जस्ट थोड़ा पहले कौन सा बैंड है जी जी सो इट विल बी जी देन देर विल बी दिस वन दिस इज फाइव सिक्स दैट इज टी देन देर विल बी यस दिश बोलो मैम तो फोर के ऊपर जो एक बैंड है वो नहीं आएगा नहीं वी हैव टू सी द सीक्वेंस ऑफ बी एन यू नो बेटा डिपेंडिंग ऑन द साइज ऑफ बैंड इट इज लाइक सेपरेट मैम तो कैसे पता चलेगा कि यही होगा हाँ दैट्स व्हाट आई सेड यू नीड टू पुट अ स्केल टू सी व्हिच वन इज गोइंग लाइक दिस आप अगर यहाँ एक स्केल ऐसे डालोगे ना देन यू विल बी एबल टू सी व्हिच व्हिच वन विल कम वेयर कौन आगे है कौन पीछे है बट नाउ डेज वी डोंट हैव टू डू दिस पेनफुल जॉब इट कैन बी डन बाई द ऑटोमेटिक डीएनए सिक्वेंस which can uh, scan each and every band and can uh, look into it ki kon pehle hai kon baad mein understood yes ma'am so i know uh, see uh, in in this regard no detailed questions will come but just to give you a minute idea about what dna sequencing is because this is the word used a lot in this chapter so i think you can know about it and this is the sanger method by which dna was sequenced nowadays you have to just prepare these things that template dntps primers and for polymer polymerase put in the test tube let the reaction occur then load in the gel that is uh, polyacrylamide gel and then you can directly go for the process uh, it is automated nowadays so that's all about dna sequencing any other doubt if you have any minor doubt please feel free to tell me class yes ma'am have you understood what i taught as people said that you don't have any doubt so now i'm going towards the next part of this chapter that is called dna finger printing so um, this is the blueprint of the process of dna fingerprint so first question that comes into the mind why dna fingerprinting finger does dna have any finger and uh, what is the significance of this dna fingerprint what is the significance of fingerprints we have beta do you think fingerprints human fingerprints have any significance class individuality uh, so how it is uh, determining individuality how it is helpful fingerprinting technique is helpful in which aspect none of you heard about fingerprints and their use in uh, crime scene analysis and all yes ma'am ma'am means general matlab the general one only i am asking you so what is a fingerprint crimes mein wo detect karte na fingerprints ha uh, so kaise detect karte hain koi machine hoti hai usse there is a shape a uh, shape of the fingerprint 
by analyzing which we can identify and every individual have a unique fingerprint which is not at all repeated for any other person other than identical twins hum sabhi ka yahan pe separate separate fingerprint hoga so if i am going to a place and committing any crime that place different objects there may be chances of my fingerprints to stay over there and if like five suspects are there and you are matching fingerprints of these five suspects with the fingerprint you obtained at the crime scene you can identify out of these five suspects who were present at that time during the uh, crime so <clears throat> this is about the normal fingerprinting technique this part is clear to all of you yes ma'am so next question is what is dna fingerprint what do we mean by and why we require a dna fingerprint see uh, the fingerprinting the normal fingerprinting process is replicable i don't know how fond you are of hindi and english movies but generally uh, it is very easy nowadays to copy the fingerprint person who are using uh, uh, fingerprinting of others are wearing either a nail clipper or a special type of gloves in which the fingerprint of the other person is impregnated and if you are touching anywhere in the crime scene that person will be found guilty not you so how to solve this problem so there comes the picture of dna fingerprint printing which is very very difficult to uh replicate so what is dna fingerprinting actually in case of dna after studying human genome project you know that all of us are having more than 99% similarity in our dna very minute differences are there in our dna but those minute differences can be used to identify whose dna is this the basic idea is same of fingerprinting जैसे कि फिंगर प्रिंटिंग में हम चार लोगों की फिंगर प्रिंट्स को क्राइम सीन में पाए जाए जाने वाले फिंगर प्रिंट से मैच करते हैं यहाँ पे हम क्राइम सीन में पाए जाने वाले डीएनए सैंपल को चार लोगों के डीएनए सैंपल से मैच करने हैं एंड वी विल सी कि किसके डीएनए सैंपल क्राइम सीन में पाए जाने वाले डीएनए सैंपल से मैच कर अब डीएनए तो कोई किसी का ले नहीं सकता है क्योंकि हमारी बॉडी की हर एक सेल का डीएनए सेम टू सेम होता है आई गेस दिस मच इज अंडरस्टूड बाय ऑल ऑफ यू है ना हमारी बॉडी के सभी के डीएनए के पार्ट्स क्या होते हैं सेम होते हैं कि नहीं होते हैं क्लास कैन यू हियर मी सेम होता है सो I cannot forge मतलब मैं ऐसा नहीं कर सकती हूँ कि मैं किसी और की डीएनए की कॉपी अपनी शरीर पे रखू इट इज डिफिकल्ट टू डिच अ पर्सन सो दैट इज वाई इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन डी एन ए फिंगर प्रिंटिंग एंड दिस टेक्निक इमर्ज अ लॉट एंड यूज नॉट ओनली फॉर क्राइम सीन एनालिसिस इट इज यूज फॉर वेरियस पर्पजेस समझो एक ट्रेन का एक्सीडेंट हुआ है एक बच्चा पहचानना नहीं जा पा रहा है कि वो उसका फादर और मदर कौन है बाय मैचिंग द डीएनए पैटर्न ऑफ द चाइल्ड एंड लुकिंग इनटू द सिमिलरिटी ऑफ फादर एंड मदर वी कैन प्रेडिक्ट कि आजू बाजू में जो व्यक्ति है उनमें से कौन इसका फादर या मदर होगा 
in some cases of disputed paternity ke kisi lady ne claim kiya hai ke i am bearing child of this man in my womb so dna testing se pata kiya ja sakta hai ki is she claiming correctly or not so thousand other effects of dna fingerprinting is there we are going to talk about them one by one but it's a very interesting thing and let me tell you um in our nation in foreign countries 200 250 years old cases are solved by using dna can you imagine some old cases could have been solved why because for extraction of dna fingerprinting the natural fingerprinting goes and wash away very easily if you i am touching a glass my fingerprint will last there for a period of time if there is washing of that part or something it will wash away but if in the finger uh, nails of a person consider karo if someone is coming and killing a person the uh, the person who is getting killed is uh, i can say uh, uh, is uh, uh, beating that person or uh, scratching that person in that case some part of the skin cells may be present in the nail that much dna sample is enough semen sample that much is enough that much blood stain one drop of blood is enough to go for dna fingerprint so this is why this uh, technique came into existence so actually it was invented by alex jeffrey in the year 8, 1985 and uh, it took uh, many years to uh, like uh, get get it imbibed into the crime scene analysis bahut saal lag gaye ye decide karne ke liye ki kya isko ye proof ko hum valid consider kare ke na and finally laws and uh, uh, regulation decided that it can be taken as a proof so um, these are the different types of biological sample that can be used for dna fingerprinting it can be blood it can be hair saliva can be used semen can be used any body tissue part okay even uh, like uh, dna samples can be obtained from vaginal cell, uh, cells uh, which is present at the outside layer of the condom and it is used during sexual intercourse so uh, nothing can escape dna fingerprint so we will look into the steps of dna fingerprinting is the introduction part uh, understood by everyone or you require some more explanation class yes ma'am so the first step is isolation of dna i told you that dna exists inside the nuclear membrane so uh, it needs to be broken and the uh, dna needs to be extracted so a uh, small amount of tissue is required then it is incubated with a specialized digestive protein and then it is uh, uh, going through the process of centrifugation and finally dna is obtained i am not uh, discussing the detailed procedure over here as i mentioned earlier this is one of your practical we will discuss anyways about that that time so once the we obtain the dna sample the next step is digestion of dna by restriction endo so what is this restriction endonucleus this name is a uh, very important thing because it itself says a lot one word this restriction 
and the second word is endo and the third word is nucleus see the nucleus or nucleic acid digestive enzymes can be of two types one is endonuclease and the other one is exonuclease so the endonuclease consider if this is the dna fragment endonuclease have ability to cut in between whereas in case of exonuclease it can chew the dna fragment only from the end it can chew and destroy dna fragment of, of structure from the end so obviously if dna is a circular one and there is no free end exonuclease cannot work upon it but in case of endonuclease it can break down part of dna like this now this is to understood ki endonuclease is something which is cutting dna in between but why we are using this word restriction some endonuclease if you are giving dna to it can cut at any point there is no fixed point but some endonucleases are very very restrictive they cut at specific point so that is why these restriction enzymes are restriction endonucleases are known as molecular caesar Why DNA की piece इतनी छोटी होती है that you cannot cut it with normal scissors. You can cut them with this. Yes, Desh. Ma'am, I am having one question that uh, exo my exonucleus is not performing a function when it is in a circular DNA. Exonucleases are not specific. No, consider I want to cut DNA at a specific point, Desh. Okay. so if you add exonuclease to it it can cut at any point your purpose will not be served whereas in case of restriction endonuclease it, it require a specific sequence for example here you can see that it's not cutting anywhere it it will cut like this only a a t t jahan jahan a a t t hai wo wahi pe cut karega it will not cut at any other part so if you know the sequence of dna you will be able to choose restriction endonuclease as per your need and then those restriction endonuclease will give you desired segments of dna let me give you one example with that sure i'll give you one example consider you have a long stretch of dna a now uh, if you are using a endonuclease which is restriction that restriction endonuclease will select this part and it will cut this piece of dna like this only so once it is cut you will be able to understand and predict ki aapke paas teen segment honge one will have atg other segment will have c c g a sorry c c g a t a t c c g a a t understood class i am so it will be cutting where uh, the coding will be same like c c g and c c g 
Ah, wherever it like there are thousand types of restriction endonuclease, beta. They are actually uh, obtained from bacteria only. So depending on each restriction endonuclease, these are having their own restriction signals. I'm just giving an example. Some other restriction endonuclease can have ATG or AAT. Then it will cut at AAT part only. Understood? Yes, ma'am. Understood. So now, uh, now uh, this is what is beauty of restriction endonuclease. Is this part should I consider clear and move ahead? Yes, ma'am. So uh, the sections of DNA that are uh, obtained by after treating it with restriction endonuclease are called restriction fragments. And not one or two, you know, we are dealing with a very big size of DNA. So thousands of restriction fragments of different sizes are obtained by this. Generally, the restriction enzymes that are used are He3 or HIN F1, ALU1. These are named from the bacteria uh, uh, from which they are extracted. We will talk about restriction endonuclease in detail in uh, later chapters of biotechnology. That is unit number four you have this year. So, for example, this HE3 is uh, extracted from Haemophilus influenzae. So, that's why it is HE, it's having this name HE. And 3, because it is the third restriction endonuclease discovered from B. Now, this reaction mixture is incubated 37 degrees centigrade. Why? Because uh, the cutting of restriction fragment will not done, will not be done overnight. No, you will be requiring some time to cut it. So that's why this incubation is required. So once uh, we are sure that the restriction endonuclease uh, served its purpose, uh, after proper incubation comes the step three, that is electrophoresis or electrophoretic separation of pregnant. It is similar to the DNA uh, uh, sequencing. We have a gel, which is agarose gel, uh, and it has a cathode and anode filled with lot of buffer and uh, sample, like uh, consider if this is the person, if this is obtained at the crime scene, or ye aapka suspect one hai, uska DNA hai, and this is for suspect two. Okay. Now, what do you do? These three DNA that you extract from the three of them are the same as the endonuclease. Separate from the three of them. Then you have to put these samples into these wells and let the uh, DNA strands or DNA fragments move ahead. All DNA fragments will move towards the positive uh, electrode that is anode. Is this part clear to everyone? Some students are really silent in this class. I am not sure at all if they are understanding. Mishka, are you understanding what I am teaching, Peta? Your voice is not clear, Mishka. Sorry, ma'am. You under you are understanding. You are able to understand what I am teaching. Yes, ma'am. Great. So then, uh, the DNA is negatively charged, so all of them will start moving towards the positive electrode. The small DNA will uh, move faster and the big DNAs will move slower. This is the known to all of us. Uh, now, depending on their basis, uh, size, the, on the basis of their size, the DNA fragments will be separated. So, uh, if I say that there is one, uh, these are called... Uh, 
these small uh, like things are called lanes of dna i have two lanes of dna or two fragments a and b so i just want to know nakshatra can you tell me a chhota hoga ya b chhota hoga beta which one will be smaller a or b nakshatra b ma'am very good very good nakshatra uh dish and yesha he answered it correctly so now once they are uh, like uh, separated as per their size uh we need to shift into a medium where we can see them because electrophoresis is something where uh we cannot look into them in the gel properly so i need to transfer them into a medium where they can stick so here transfer of dna on nylon on nitrocellulose membrane is done now these dna fragments are uh, transferred to a nylon sheet so uh, or it can be a nitrocellulose membrane uh, actually what is done is this is the layering of a transfer machine there is a porous mat after that there will be a rubber gasket then uh, above this rubber gasket will be a watman filter paper then there will be nylon membrane and at the top there will be uh the agarose gel and sometimes they are soaked into a buffer and uh, so that the transfer of dna present in the gel is uh, there in the nylon membrane matlab agar aapki uh, gel mein ye sequence hai aisa so same to same sequence ki ek copy aa jayegi aapke paas aapki nylon membrane means the same sequence will be copied here in the nylon membrane why it is done why we shift it into nylon membrane because it is easy to see second thing is it is a gel which is very brittle it can break down nylon membrane is a better medium where you can see this method of transferring dna from gel to the uh, nitrocellulose membrane or nylon membrane is called southern blot the process is known as southern blot yes dish तो ये जो ट्रांसफर डीएनए ऑन नाइट्रोन मेम्ब्रेन है मतलब तो कोई और मेम्ब्रेन में नहीं हो सकता आ नहीं होती है एक्चुअली नाइलॉन मेम्ब्रेन्स चार्ज इज लाइक मेकिंग दिस ट्रांसफर इजी यू कैन नॉट यूज सिंपल पेपर और सम अदर मेथड्स दीस मेम्ब्रेन्स आर स्पेशली डिवाइस्ड फॉर ट्रांसफर ऑफ डीएनए एक्चुअली ये मजेदार बात है पता है सबसे पहले ये ब्लॉटिंग टेक्निक मतलब जेल में से इसको पेपर में लेना ये मेथड स्टार्ट हुआ था प्रोटीन के केस में तो जिन्होंने डिस्कवर uh, किया था हिज नेम वॉज सदर्न और मजेदार बात ये है कि uh, इसके बाद के जो ब्लॉटिंग टेक्निक्स आया है फॉर ट्रांसफर इन टू ऑफ आर एन एट इज ये अगर साउथ है तो वो नॉर्थ होगा ऐसे सोच के ट्रांसफर ऑफ आर एन एज कॉल्ड नॉर्दर्न ब्लॉट एंड फॉर प्रोटीन इट इज कॉल्ड वेस्टर्न ब्लॉट सो समाइम्स साइंटिस्ट कैन बी फॉर्मी टू दे डिट गिव देयर नेम दे फॉलोड द मेथड दैट साउथ फॉर डी एन ए नॉर्थ फॉर आर एन ए एंड वेस्ट फॉर प्रोटीन so southern blotting is the method this is a proper method you need to be equipped with the knowledge to do it hum novice log nahi kar sakte i know how to do it i as a molecular biologist i uh, know all these techniques and was fortunate enough to do them all of them okay so once it is uh, transferred into the nitrocellulose membrane or nylon membrane next thing is we need to make them visible more clearly so for that purpose radioactive probed or color probes are used so what are these probes these probes are having complementary sequences 
consider if uh, like this is my piece of dna which is having sequence a t c so the probe will have sequence t a g and at the end of probe the radioactive label or non radioactive label is there so with this probe obviously you can see the bands more clearly so this fifth step is about the um looking into the picture with a more clearer view okay so uh, once the probing is done and we are uh, we highlighted the bands next step is hybridization uh so actually in this process the dna is hybridized with the complementary sequence located on nylon membrane uh it is done for detecting the positions of the dna and finally we look uh, for these pieces of dna um are under a machine uh called auto radiography machine which can detect the radioactive uh, rays and we get the bands like this uh, this is exactly the bands uh, as uh, dna sequencing fingerprinting bhi abhi automated ho gaya hai computer systems are there there are specific uh, softwares agar aap usko jail de do to it can detect and predict the data so things are quite easy but previously we used to interpret and compare ab dekho mazedar baat consider karo i think uh, in this we will have some examples also to discuss um uh, uh dna fingerprinting can be used for various purpose i'm coming to the example um it can be used for identification of disorders for example um consider if the dna fingerprinting of a person suffering from uh, hemophilia is giving you this fragments at this position so normal person will have different types of fragment maybe the number of fragments is same but their position uh, may be different okay and the person who is hemophilic so this is the standard will have fragments at the same location so with this we can easily understand why why it is so because beta in dono ki sequences kya honge same honge and you are targeting those specific sequence by using restriction endonuclease so obviously as you are targeting specific sequence uh, jitne fragments ek standard condition mein honi chahiye in hemophilic person you will have same number of fragments at same position that's all uh, so it is very very useful in identification and you know that amniocentesis se bacche ka dna nikal ke we can go for dna finger printing okay so in crime we can use them uh, that to we already discussed then is uh, one example i wish to cite over here ek violent murder uh, hua hai and blood sample mila hai crime scene se and victims and suspect ke blood sample so this is suspect profile this is crime scene this is victims profile आपको पता करना है कि ये जो ब्लड का स्पॉट मिला है क्या वो विक्टिम का ब्लड है या सस्पेक्ट का ब्लड है तो आपके पास जो सैंपल है उसकी डीएनए फिंगरप्रिंटिंग करनी है सेम जेल में आपको विक्टिम की डीएनए निकाल के उसकी करनी है और सस्पेक्ट की करनी है इन दिस केस व्हाट डू यू थिंक इफ दीज आर द ब्लड सैंपल ऑफ सस्पेक्ट और द विक्टिम क्लास सस्पेक्ट मतलब इसी ने खून किया है अगर खून नहीं किया तो आप इसके ब्लड क्या कर रहे हैं ओके सो यू कैन 
put it as a evidence of the uh, crime ke ha isi ne khun kiya hai at least we it can be justifiably kept like that okay so apart from that inheritance cases jaise aapko pata hai uh, in india we have uh, our dna fingerprinting center which is called cdft center for dna fingerprinting it is located in the hyderabad okay many years ago a uh, lot many plants of indian origin was claimed by other uh, places of uh, like uh, वर्ल्ड जैसे बासमती राइस की बोला जाता है ओरिजिन इंडिया है बट अब तो बासमती हर जगह मिलता है आपको कनाडा में भी मिलेगा टोरंटो में भी मिलेगा जापान में भी मिलेगा आप कैसे प्रूव करोगे बासमती इज फ्रॉम इंडिया बाय लुकिंग इनटू द डीएनए फिंगरप्रिंटिंग पैटर्न ऑफ द राइस वैरायटीज ऑफ इंडिया यू कैन से दैट तो सीडीएफटी ने प्रूव uh, किया था कि uh, जो uh, ब्लैक पेपर है यू नो ब्लैक पेपर पाइपर निग्रम ब्लैक पेपर काली मरी टोस्ट के साथ हम सब खाते हैं पाकिस्तान क्लेम्ड दैट इट इज देयर्स सो आवर साइंटिस्ट बाय लुकिंग इनटू द इवोल्यूशनरी रिलेशनशिप ऑफ डिफरेंट सिमिलर प्लांट्स प्रूव दैट कि नहीं इट इज नॉट फ्रॉम पाकिस्तान इट्स ओरिजिन इज फ्रॉम इंडिया so immigration cases inheritance cases koi uh, aake bole ke main iska waris hu how will you check if that person is not there by dna testing we can uh, like say for example yahan dekho a uh, child is having how many similar bands like parents iski bands मदर से नहीं आइर मदर से मिलते हैं या फादर से देखो ये दो बैंड मदर से मिलता है ये फादर से मिलता है ये फादर से मिलता है दिस इज मैचिंग विद द मदर एंड दिस इज अ न्यू वन बट विथ मैक्सिमम सिमिलरिटी यू कैन से हाँ ये बच्चा इस माँ बाप का बच्चा होगा इट्स नॉट फ्रॉम समवन एल्स अंडरस्टूड सो सिमिलर थिंग्स आर इन्वेस्टिगेशन करके निकाला हुआ कोई भी चीज रॉन्ग हो सकता है जजमेंट भी रॉन्ग हो सकती है ना but if it is done by expert without adulteration it is generally uh, like just uh, first it was in 2002 elizabeth hurley was a person who claimed ke steve wing is the father of her child and by using dna fingerprinting it was proved ke ha ye isi ke father hai it's not a wrong case um colin pitch folk uh, it is the first criminal who caught like uh, um he committed uh, rape and murder of two girls at 1986 aur dekho 2 saal baad uski dna sample se ye prove kiya gaya ki this crime was con conducted by him so uh, these are different examples of dna fingerprinting and this is a novel technique which can be useful for detection of so many crime and criminal cases so today's session was interesting this is what is biology this is what is future of biology it's not about mugging up the definitions of cell division and knowing about the different steps of reproduction this is the world where we should belong in future to apply that knowledge to create create something novel and this is just the beginning of journey after this in the next uh, unit and next to next unit we are going to lot learn about lot many uh, uh, things about like this so now i wish to share the video of dna fingerprinting 
and with this with that we will conclude our lecture uh, i guess the screen is visible beta yes ma'am so without much ado let us start What is DNA fingerprinting or DNA profiling? Leicester University geneticist Alec Jeffries developed a technique called DNA fingerprinting in 1985. It allows DNA samples from different people to be compared to look for similarities and differences. It's used for solving crimes and can also confirm if people are related to each other, like in paternity testing. Any two people in the world have 99.9% .9 of their DNA the same. So this process analyzes the differences in the remaining 0.1%. This modern technology is called DNA profiling. It's a very sensitive technique which only needs a few skin cells, a hair root or a tiny amount of blood or saliva. There are sections or loci of chromosomes where instead of a gene consisting of a long sequence of bases, there are much shorter sequences of three, four or five bases that are repeated many times. For example, these repeated sequences are called short tandem repeats or STR. At these places on the chromosomes where we find these STRs, there are areas that vary in number of repeats. DNA profiling only looks at these STRs. A cell sample is collected. This could be from some blood at a crime scene or a swab from the inside of someone's cheek, for example. The DNA is then extracted from the sample. Many copies of this DNA may be made using the polymerase chain reaction or PCR. Special enzymes called restriction endonucleases are used to cut the DNA up into different size pieces. The DNA samples are then put into wells in a special gel called agarose for the process of gel electrophoresis which separates the DNA fragments by size. The pattern is then transferred to a nylon sheet in southern blotting. And finally, the lines produced by the DNA samples from different people are compared. So let's have a go at using DNA profiles to solve some mysteries. An item was stolen in a burglary. A drop of blood was left behind by the thief. Samples of DNA were taken from four suspects and compared to the sample left at the crime scene. Which suspect is guilty? Here's a clue. Look for the one that is most similar to the one from the crime scene. Are you there, Beta? Yes, ma'am. Who will be guilty out of these four suspects? Ma'am, your screen is not visible. Yes. Ma'am, suspect three. Suspect three. Yes, correct. The video while you decide. Suspect three is guilty. Can you see how the pattern of bands matches in suspect three and the crime scene? Their DNA is the same. Let's try another. A soldier has been killed in an explosion and has lost his dog tags that identify him. Three soldiers are missing from their unit, so the army asks the three sets of parents for a DNA sample so that they might compare it to the soldier's DNA and therefore make an identification. Remember, the soldier will only share half of his DNA with each parent. So which set of parents is the soldier the son of? Pause the video. Dish, can you tell me? Soldier must be from which set of parents? A, B, C, D, E, F or G, H?
ma'am i think it will be your uh, gh जीएच hmm, कैसे होगा बेटा जीएच में इन दिस रीजन बैंड ही नहीं है ये शेषा एम पेरेंट सीडी सीडी मे बी लेट्स लुक वाइल यू डिसाइड पेरेंट सी एंड डी As you can see, he inherited the first band from parent D, and the second, third, and fourth from parent C, and so on. So now you understand how DNA profiles or fingerprints are made, and seen some examples of where they can be used. You can even interpret a DNA profile. So with this, I am completing the chapter number uh, six. and uh, that's all from my side beta so i just wish to say best wishes for your tomorrow's test okay